Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be going over um, how I designed and built my rear differential. Uh, this is something I'm really proud of because I kind of developed the idea in my own mind and later found out that it's uh, actually a real system that they use in um, like trophy trucks and off-road vehicles. Uh, and that's a ratcheting differential design. Um, and what that does essentially is um, allows the outside wheel to turn faster uh, around corners. I'm sure many of you know, but differential in a standard car is a series of gears um, that allow power to be transferred equally throughout the wheels while cornering. Because if you think about it, when a car goes around a corner, the outside wheel needs to turn faster to uh, allow for the extended uh, turn radius. Um, Obviously, if it's a solid axle, you're going to be uh, rubbing your tires and it can cause extra wear, which is not good, especially on a softer tire compound like these off-road tires. So, um, my design actually started with a locking differential, a homemade locking differential, but that essentially only allowed me to switch between a completely open diff and a completely locked diff. Uh, and when I say open diff, I don't even mean diff. It was essentially just one wheel drive, uh, which kind of defeated the purpose of why I built this go-kart. I built this to be a capable off-road vehicle, uh, and one wheel drive obviously was not gonna do the trick there. Um, it was, two, it was uh, two, I believe they're called Nova Jaws, uh, that I got at Tractor Supply. Uh, and one of them was fixed to the left side axle and the other was sliding across the right axle. Uh, behind that was a plate that was drawn by two strings to pulleys and then to a cable and to a lever um, near the cockpit, uh, which allowed me to pull the lever and slide this second Nova joint uh, into contact with the uh, first one. Uh, this allowed me to lock the differential or lock the axle and have two-wheel drive, uh, which I use typically only when I got stuck uh, because the other system allowed me to drive perfectly fine on concrete or hard material. After a while, um, since it was essentially just metal on metal contact, uh, the sliding system stopped working. It would get hung up uh, and wouldn't work properly. Uh, so I really took time to sit down and think about how I was going to redesign this. Um, I toyed around with the idea of a, a ratcheting system to accomplish this, but I never really realized the potential until recently. Um, I really took time to think about the design, drew it out, and came up with the idea of essentially just drilling holes in my main drive sprocket. Um, I drilled half inch holes, uh, one on each side of the sprocket, and ran a half inch uh, grade eight that's very important. It had to be a very strong bolt uh, through with washers and that essentially held uh, what I call the uh, bird's beaks because uh, that's kind of what they look like. It's, a, it's essentially just a ratchet um, which is spring loaded to another bolt running through uh, the same sprocket. Now there's one on each side of the sprocket uh, and one facing the opposite direction. One goes to a uh, slightly modified um, drive sprocket on the left side and a slightly modified drive sprocket on the right side. Each one has the teeth uh, beveled and angled to add extra stability to the bird's beaks when they're engaging. Uh, this essentially allows you to have two-wheel drive constantly uh, when accelerating a straight line and when turning all power is transferred to the inside wheel. Now this might not sound good, however, if you're in a uh, low traction situation where the inside wheel were to begin to slip, it, uh, that ratcheting mechanism would catch up with the outside and you would regain traction with both wheels. Uh, and this would just be a constantly occurring system. Um, so you essentially have a method of mechanical uh, traction control. This is a really great system for low budget applications I would say it cost me no more than $30 to make, um, and it works just as well as a thousand plus dollar uh, limited slip differential that you could buy for like a trophy truck. Uh, so I'm very happy with the system, it works very well. Now let's take a closer look. 
Okay, so here you can see a close-up view um, of the system. Uh, it's essentially, uh, like I said, just a bolt uh, that runs through my main drive sprocket. Um, and through that bolt is my bird's beak here. Now that is ratcheting off of these teeth of the drive sprocket, which are connected to the left axle. Now this system is just repeated on the right side, um, on the other end of the sprocket. Now it's important to note that this central drive sprocket um, is connected to uh, both axles uh, with this hub that you can see here on the one side. Uh, there's another identical one on the other side, um, but the axle is split in the center. So it's essentially just spinning in there. That's not made to actually connect it to the axle. This is a grade eight bolt, uh, as well as grade eight nuts, washers. Uh, and then here, this end is an encapsulated nut that I actually um, ran onto a different bolt and then was able to thread backwards onto this one because the end of the bolt was not long enough with the uh, distance that I had to space it out. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the car here and demonstrate the ratcheting mechanism. Okay, so now that the um, car is jacked up, you can see uh, that everything is free spinning. If I rotate the uh, torque converter uh, driven sprocket, it uh, moves all of the system here. Uh, now, if I hold the right wheel and continue to rotate the left wheels um, faster, as if uh, simulating a corner, you can see that we get a ratcheting system. Uh, and then of course if I try to rotate it backwards, everything stops. Uh, here you can see the spring better, uh, and that's just built it uh, using a 3 8 inch bolt running a little bit farther down the sprocket. So again, you'll see that if I rotate the left wheel faster than the right, it ratchets. Now of course this system repeats on the right side, uh, giving us our differential action. Now this system works pretty much perfectly. Um, the only uh, hang up that I encountered on the way of building it um, was the bolt actually bending. I originally started off with 3 8 inch grade 2 bolts, you know, standard bolts that you'd get at the hardware store, and those actually bent after uh, I floored it from a standstill. So I replaced it with the uh, half inch grade 8 bolts, and of course they haven't gone anywhere since. Uh, this works really well. Uh, if you have any questions for me about it, uh, please feel free to message me on my Instagram page, uh, dbrgarage. You can contact me via there. Thank you very much for watching.